Welcome to Channel Mastery. This is the podcast where we actually dive into the minds of leaders in channel sales. And really what we're trying to do is trying to uncover their secrets to success. And uh, we're going to have some really impactful and insightful discussions all in just five minutes or less. So what do you think? Let's go. Today's guest is Chris Bradley. Chris is a managing partner from i Networks uh, in the Philadelphia PA area. Chris, good to have you. Thanks for joining. It's good to see you, Ira. Good morning. Good morning. So let's let's get started. So Chris, why don't you tell everyone about a little bit about your background? I think it's important to kind of have a frame cool. of reference here. So name's Chris Bradley, grew up in the Philadelphia area. Um, always had an interest in getting into the technology industry. Obviously, it's constantly evolving and changing. So while um, at Penn State, I did my undergrad within public speaking and communications um, and with Comcast being in the corporate headquarters in Philadelphia, went and worked for Comcast right out of the bang for six months, got uh, my feet wet doing door to door sales, realized that the corporate life really wasn't for me and um, was fortunate enough to be uh, mentored by Chad Parnas, who was the CEO of Four Telecom Help. Um, I started at the bottom. We had about 15 employees in um, expense management, technology, brokerage, and advising. Um, worked my way up there for six and a half years to the chief revenue officer. And um, that company was sold to private equity um, for an undisclosed amount. Uh, and at that point, I wanted to eventually, my, my whole path was to try to get to an owner or a, a part owner in a company. So um, they had handed me the great thing, a, an NDA or a, a non-compete that I had to run out, which thank the Lord is get, being shut off. Um, but went to another industry, learned about software, and then came aboard i Networks with Kevin Fortier, who is my partner. Um, he had built this company for six and a half years, knew I had a bunch of experience, a uh, master's in communications, and then certifications in Lean Six Sigma, and also leadership development on strategic mapping. And we came together and kind of changed our entire go-to-market plan, very similar to Accenture and KPMG of, um, you know, being more of consultative versus pushing a product. It's more listening to the client. So, awesome, awesome. Thanks for that up uh, that uh, overview. That was really great. So, I think let's get into it. So, basically, the gist of of these uh, podcasts is we're going to ask you a simple question. We're going to I'm going to put a five minute timer up on the screen, cool. and we'll have five minutes to kind of whip through it and give our best insights. So let me put the timer up on the screen. All right, should be there. Great. So, Chris, uh, let's go ahead and start the timer. So, Chris, you know, the question for today is, listen, you have a great experience in technology, consulting and sales. You deal with a lot of different companies with a lot of different channel sales uh, managers. And I want to ask you, like in your in your head, what makes a great channel manager? So I wrote down six areas that um, kind of hit on what makes a great channel manager because we get hit up by hundreds of them every single day trying to get our time. And we're always asking that question of, are you gonna add value and, and, and ROI? So the six that I've listed out, one is personal engagement and business understanding. So when a channel manager approaches us, understanding our personalities and us as people, me and Kevin and anyone on our team, um, which is super important. Are we more people people? Are we more money people? Um, you know, how do we work? How do we operate? Another piece of that is understanding our business model of our go to market and how to how do you as a vendor fit within that model, um, which I think is super important because, you know, we don't want to put a, a square peg in a, in a round hole. So understanding yeah. our approach of a consulting advising and how we go in um, and leverage some of our resources at the master is important. Uh, number two would be responsiveness and sense of urgency. So um, making sure that you're responding to emails, text messages, phone calls, and even if you are in a meeting, hey, we'll get back to you. And that goes for both pricing, contracts, and implementation, ensuring that all three or four buckets, even customer service, we know what we're, gonna, what we're doing, how we're you know, gonna go to market, and how we're gonna get it done. 
um, three monthly opportunity reviews. So setting up a call with us to go through opportunities. What is dead? What is live? Um, and what is the probability of it closing or what could help us close it and, and add value? Four, uh, event alerts and invitations. Um, so anytime there's a, a channel manager like Ryan Blair, for example, knows of local networking events that he's attending, he'll let us know and we'll go together. Or if Telesystem is providing an event that's coming up, letting us know about it so that we can, you know, go to that with our clients and it's an opportunity to network and engage. Uh, five would be leveraging partnerships. So I think Telesystem has done a really good job of partnering with WIP, which has tie-ins with the Philadelphia Phillies, the Flyers, and then even the Eagles of allowing us to bring our customers or prospects to a box to once again network and 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 you know understand who Telesystem is, but also us getting in depth. And then five is organizing joint client partner vendor events, um, where you know Telesystem does a great job of enabling us with funding to do a happy hour that is a very low cost budget event that there is a major ROI. Um, on the event, because I think everybody thinks big events comes with big ROI and generally speaking, you know, the smallest events and lowest budget are the ones that cultivate the most opportunities and relationships. Now, that's fantastic. I mean, those are six very solid points. You know, I'm going to spin back. I think it was to the first one, which is, you know, having the ability to for them to understand you and your business. You know, too often I've seen in the channel that these channel managers, all they want to do is talk about themselves and they only want to talk about their business, but that's not important. What's important is how do you go to market? What what are things that you're interested in, in doing? Who are your types of clients? Who makes an ideal client? And I think if people could take away that one thing, just remember, it's not about you as a channel manager. It's not about your widgets you're selling. It's about the, but the selling partner and how they want to go to market. Like to me, that's critical. And I, I think it's also too on the agents giving feedback of your guys' business, things that we're seeing in the market that Telesystem needs to get up to par on and giving that feedback. And I think the nice part is that the channel manager will get that to the right director to ensure that those those are being met so that they can stay relevant within the market yeah absolutely absolutely well with four seconds left dude that was fantastic so uh, chris i want to thank you so much for joining today it was really great uh just hearing your insights and uh you know being that you're from the other side of the coin hearing that is super i think it's it's very impactful for people who are going to be listening to this uh going forward so thanks for joining uh dude and have a great day cool